All right, and because I didn't look at my example probably before I started, this is the exact situation I mentioned a moment ago. X is 6 minus 64. We're looking at a difference of squares. We're also looking at a difference of cubes. X to 6 is X squared cubed. 64 is 4 cubed. X to 6 is X cubed squared. And 64 is 8 squared. Always do difference of squares first. All right? So if I'm looking at this as a difference of squares, we're going to do parentheses, parentheses. And the square root of x to the 6 is x cubed. Anytime you root a power, you're just going to divide the power by the root. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And the square root of 64 is 8. And it's negative 64, so we need a positive 8 and a negative 8 to account for the opposite, or the negative sign on the answer. So that's the difference of squares factor. You've got to always do that first. And then we're at the same point where we're last problem, right? We've got x cubed plus 8, which is the sum of cubes. Cube root of x cubed is x, the cube root of 8 is 2. Second parentheses is square the first, multiply the two together, square the second. The signs are same, opposite, plus. The second object, x cubed minus 8, we're going to do x minus 2. So the cube root of x cubed is x, cube root of 8 is 2. And we're going to square the first, we're going to multiply them together, we're going to square the second. And we get the same sign minus, opposite sign plus, plus. And that's the entire factored form. Now, imagine had we gone with the difference of cubes first. We would have gotten x to the second minus 4, then x to the fourth plus 4x four squared plus 16. This obviously is going to be the x plus 2 and x minus 2, right? But this doesn't obviously factor into these two guys, but it would. So the chance of you seeing that, hey, this factors down to these two guys is very, very slim. That's why you always want to do the difference of squares first. That's easy, and then it's very easy to see the difference in sum of cubes. It's not easy to see how this thing here would factor into these two guys here. But if you try multiplying these together, we'll make that. But I, by myself, I have no idea how I'd factor that. I, I don't know how I'd go about doing it. There's no, no technique that I have would get me from here to those two guys without some weird stuff going on. All right, so always the difference of squares first, followed by some difference of cubes. Make that your checklist. Check off difference of squares. If it is, go ahead. If it isn't, move on to the next one. For example, 1 plus y to the 12, I think, was one of the homework problems. Yes. That's not a difference of squares because it's not being subtracted. So then you go directly to the sum of difference of cubes. It won't factor again. All right. But if it is a difference of squares, it will factor again, and it just you won't see it. There's no way to figure that out okay. easily. Yeah. There's a way to figure it out, but I'm, I can't even fathom an easy way to do it. <laughs>